Morning, Trainiacs. We have a moderately exciting day. Kind of big. This is always a fun day. That's right, it's new bike day. Now I'm fairly certain that this is a Canyon Dude fat bike. Now, with a lot of people not being able to travel this winter, there's probably gonna be a lot more people that are buying fat bikes. This is what my bike shop tells me. So, if you are looking at getting a fat bike, I'll explain to you the complete beginner's guide to getting set up with your first fat bike. This is fat bike, just number two for me. But I'm from Winnipeg, so I'm like a pro. So why N plus one yourself another bike? Well, this is not a replacement for a mountain bike. Mountain bikes are very technical. They're meant to be ridden in really gnarly trails. Now you can ride this in really gnarly trails, but I don't know, it's not really necessary. I think a mountain bike is a much better tool for that. What this is for is if you are looking at doing a lot of riding on a beach or in the snow like this, that's what it's for. So the average person who lives in a really good climate, you probably don't need this. It's fun, but not necessary. What I like to use this for is not really technical riding. Save that for the mountain bikes. I use this for just the easy, Zone two, one hour, two hour rides. That's about it. Just getting out and not doing everything indoors when it doesn't need to be super specific. Like I'll use Zwift for interval workouts during the week. I'll use this for general one hour recovery rides or a two to three hour ride on the weekend. So don't think of this as a replacement for a mountain bike whatsoever. Think about it as a tool to still be able to ride outside in snowy or muddy or sandy conditions and not have to do everything inside. And don't expect to do really key efforts in this. Great workout but more because it's just long, grinding, low cadence strength effort, as opposed to hitting intervals, hitting high power. You're not gonna do that. The wheels have so much resistance, that just by nature, you end up with a very grinding kind of workout. opinion because it's a just kind of a fun tool it's not meant for really specific training or definitely not performance you can go way way down in budget I've seen guys that ride with us and they've been riding for two years on a bike that's 900 bucks they make some alterations to the wheels which I'll explain in a little bit to get the performance really good but the basics of what you need are disc brakes because that's a lot of wheel to stop. The right fit and the right size tires. Besides that, you don't need a whole lot. You can use your winter boots, you can use platform pedals, you can use an aluminum frame because even if you go down to a carbon frame, guess what? It's still gonna be really, really heavy. Like, really heavy. Well, this is certainly nice and like the dropper post is a nice luxury as you're going up and down hills. It's not necessary. Really just to get out and be on your bike, you need a lot less bike. So I don't recommend getting like the $400 Costco bikes. I definitely recommend getting a bike from a reputable supplier. Like these are less than $3,000. You can find some bikes for 
around a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars those are perfectly fine stick with getting a bike that's in your budget that is made from a knowledgeable bike company a company that makes bikes now wheel selection this is where the real secret sauce is so what i've got here is four inch wheels now to get a really good functioning bike you don't want the big five five and a half four and three quarter those giant wheels a four inch wheel is what you want you also don't need to stud these tires how you end up getting more traction is by actually decreasing the pounds per square inch in the tire of what you fill it up to to somewhere in between about four and seven really really low and because it's so low most bike pumps aren't actually going to read that low so you're going to need a special tool that reads really low psi now to make the ride quality extra good one of the best things that you can do for mountain bikes for gravel bikes for especially fat bikes is make the wheels and the tires tubeless take the tube out and fill it with sealant the reason that, that makes such a big difference with big tires like this is because rolling weight is amplified by about four times so in the case of these tubes which weigh like a pound to two pounds each you're talking about well upwards of the performance gains of say eight to 16 or even 20 pounds depending on how big your tires are so that's almost a must and the change maybe costs you 60 bucks So I want to get back and tell you just a couple of the real quick tips that I've found to make it a little bit more upgraded, a little bit more enjoyable. But the bottom line is this is fun. This is super fun. You can go anywhere, like literally anywhere. Snowbank, no problem. Ditch, no problem. You go over it like nothing. The thing to know about it is you're not going to get in proper workouts. I made the mistake last year of thinking I was going to do my four hour endurance rides entirely on this or even two hours on this and then two hours on Zwift at home after to make up a full four hour ride. But this is just so strength focused that two hours, two and a half, that's about what you want to do. So it's more just for getting out and being outside having another more fun option than nothing but indoor training i love my zwift but when it's all you've ever got for half a year it gets tough this is fun plus you get that cool sound So a few things, first one is here, down here with the pedals. I said that you can use flats, by all means you can. What I've ended up putting on here is egg beaters because there's tons of clearance so snow doesn't really build up and I like using these so I can clip in and use really, really big winter shoes that are designed for fat biking so your tootsies don't get cold. But the nice thing about this is as you start doing a little bit more technical riding with mountain bike people, you can throw the bike around a little bit with your foot clipped in. Next thing is that lube on the chain should be dry lube, not the normal lube that you end up using for your tri bike or your road bike. Reason for that is that dry lube, it doesn't build up gunk as quickly as wet lube. Wet lube, when it gets dirty, it gets, it gets muddy. Dry lube, you're gonna have to apply more times, so you're gonna have to just clean this with a towel take the lube and the little bit of dirt that's on there off and then reapply the dry lube more often but it's going to stop it from getting really gunky next thing is with the water bottle always if you're like most people who are going to use fat bikes riding in the winter you're going to want an insulated water bottle i learned that one the hard way when i ended up with two blocks of ice the very first time i went out for a ride so you've got to have something insulated this two hours later still cool and the final thing I'd recommend is if you start getting into really cold, like minus 
12 Celsius, so we're talking uh, zero Fahrenheit or colder, get a pair of bar mitts, otherwise known as pogies. These are made of, the ones that I've got are made of neoprene, so they're completely windproof. They go over top of the bar here. You end up securing them in so that they're basically built in. And then you put your hand in, and I actually, all the way down to almost the coldest temperatures possible, I'll use just a little light glove inside here because this just stays nice and warm inside, kind of like a wetsuit. So there's my new Canyon Dude in comparison to the Trek fat bike that I had. It's good, it's every last bit is good. It's less expensive. And once I end up tubelessizing the tires, it's gonna be performing nice, light, nimble. Now in my opinion, that's crucial for anyone that is getting a fat bike. So if you do end up getting a fat bike or you've got a fat bike and you wanna learn how to tubelessize the tires, check out the video here. And then the final thing is uh, you're gonna fall a lot. But you're going slow, so it's cool. All right, Trainiacs, if you aren't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button below. Later.